Hi folks. Over the last few months I've made several bubbling nets and I wanted to share what I've learned with you. I made them by the method that uses a uh, netting needle, also called a shuttle and sizing card. And I made them with various materials in different sizes with different sized meshes too. A bubble net is basically a triangular shaped net that you attach two of its corners to some poles, dip it in some bubble juice and hold it up to the wind and these uh, beautiful clouds of bubbly foam come out of it. It's very cool. Very, very fun. Uh, anyway, in case you ever want to try this yourself, uh, I hope this video can be helpful to you and uh, happy bubbling. These are the tools I used to make my bubbling nets. This is a netting needle that I sort of chiseled out of an old paint stirring stick. You can buy these online too. And uh, these are a couple different sized uh, sizing cards. And your sizing card is going to determine the size of the mesh in your net. It'll be about twice the size of the cards. This card was used to make this net and the cells are about twice as big as the card. And uh, those are the tools you need to get started. Except I suppose you need some scissors too. These are the materials I've been using to build my bubbling nets. This is a medium weight cotton twine over here. And, uh, but before using cotton twine or string, it's good to boil it. It relaxes the twist a little bit and uh, takes out uh, some of the junk they put in there at the factory and will reduce your break-in period for the net. This is bamboo tape yarn, which is a favorite among bubblers for uh, various bubbling applications. And uh, this is an amazing corn fiber tape yarn, which is one of my personal favorites for a variety of bubbling situations as well. And uh, those are the things I'm going to use. The, the lighter stuff like this is more appropriate for finer mesh. And the heavier stuff is good for bubble nets with larger meshes. Uh, this, like, Twine, heavy twine like this is a bit too heavy. There's uh, the cells will be huge. You wouldn't need a netting needle anyway for it. To load up your netting needle, you just uh, put your material on it like that. Get it started. Kind of pin down the starting point, and then you go just go back and forth back and forth, left to right, and right to left, not spinning it around. That'll make a little more twist than you'd like, but that's how it goes. You can load this up quite a bit, but if you're using a sizing car that's a similar size, you want to make sure you don't get the needle so loaded up and fat that uh, it won't fit through the cells. <laughs> so. And so those are the basics of it. To get started, you make a loop in the end of your string that's at least a little bit bigger than the netting needle with all its stuff on it. And it's good to make that in a square knot so if you pull it tight it doesn't slip. And I'm going to cut off this extra so it doesn't get in our way. Now you need some kind of anchor. I'm going to use this paper towel holder here. Put my work on it like that. And uh, then you grab your sizing card, put the string on top of it, and move the top of the card to that knot, like this. And you go under and through the loop above to make your first net loop. 
and then you lock it down you make a stop knot by going over those two like that and behind and through the loop that's formed and then you can pull that tight but you want to pull it tight up against the top of the card like that now to start our triangle shape I'm going to make another one kind of like it and lock that down too and what we have now is just two little loops and uh, you continue with the next, next row like this you put the string on the card again and then you go behind and through the most recently made loop of the previous row like so and you pull it against the top of the card like that so the top of the card meets the bottom of the loop above and you make the stopper like that and keep going until you've done all your loops but after doing the last loop you always want to make one more this uh, accomplishes the triangle shape so I'm going to go through that same loop again and make a knot on it again and now what we have are two little loops and one full-sized cell in the middle I'll make one more row just for fun here I find the uh, last loop of the previous row pull it down on the top of the card make a lock knot stitch it against the top of the card and this time I get to go through a full sized cell like that lock it down Go through the last one. And lock it down to. But being the last one in the row, I must make that extra loop to add to the columns of the triangle. Like that. And now it's really starting to look a little bit like a net. And you just keep going that way until you reach your target size or weight or you run out of uh, material or patience. And then at the end the idea is to, to string a top string through the, the loops on the edge here and attach them. And that's how you make a net. As you progress and it gets bigger and bigger, it's not uh, really possible or practical or even advisable to keep the whole thing on the sizing card at the same time because naturally because of the shape of the triangle, these, these lengths over here are going to be more slack than, than towards the center. Um, so, and, and it becomes difficult to, to tie the knots properly too if you haven't got resistance and you have to turn it like this. Um, so you don't need to have all that much on there at the same time. Now as your net starts to get into the, the plus sizes like this one here is, uh, you'll, you'll encounter a problem where the, the edges tend to get to too long. They tend to get longer than the cells beside them. And I found a couple of ways to deal with that. Uh, one way to kind of compensate for that problem of the, of the edges being too long is that when you make your beginning loop of a row, like so,
and you pull this tight rather than stopping right right there where the uh, the loop would naturally meet and where, where you would typically go pull it a little bit tighter to sort of artificially shorten it It'll ha so you'll have a little bit of slack in that loop that you've just uh, hooked into pull it a little bit up from that the edges will look a, a little squirrely, but it it, comp it compensates somewhat for that for the difficulty of having the edges be a, a little bit longer than all the center loops. So you you cinch it a little bit beyond tight to uh, create a little slack there, artificially shorten it, and make your stopper knot on top of that. Feeding a top string through the net's open edge here is pretty straightforward. Uh, you want to cut a piece of top string material that's as long as your planned top, which is as long as a side, and then add some on either end for making leaders from or for at least attaching to something for the work that follows. And I think the easiest way is just to uh, load the stuff up on a netting needle and then you make a simple overhand knot over the corner loop, over a corner loop, and you just go through that loop there. And having gone behind this knot, I want to go in front of the next one, behind the next one, in front, behind, and so on to the end. And that pretty much does it. There you go. Now we have to attach that top string to the top. One way to attach your top string to the net's edge is to tie a bunch of individual knots. You can take the, the top string length and divide it by the number of cells you have and take that number and that'll give you the distance you should have between your knots which will be about the same as the width of your sizing card. Now the knots may slip around a little bit especially with this uh, bamboo material, not so much with cotton. But if you have that problem you can lock them down by putting a drop of crazy glue at these spots or maybe fabric glue would work too. Uh, there's another way you can do it using a single strand of material and your netting needle and its sizing card. I've marked this top string for where the corners should be. They'll have a distance that's the same as the sides. And at one of those points, I've tied a simple overhand knot in the top string around the, the tip of this corner loop. And that's where work will begin. I've cut a length of uh, bamboo tape yarn here that's uh, twice the length of the planned top string. I've loaded it on my needle and tied its end here to the top string, just to the left of that anchored corner. Uh, I'm using a different color bamboo tape yarn here to uh, help us see what's going on better and help me find its top string when I'm fishing this thing out of a bucket of sudsy rigs. I'll slide this knot down against that uh, anchored corner knot and that's where we'll start knitting. This is the sizing card I used to build this knot, and as you can see, its width is about the same as the distance between knots on the sides, and that is also our target distance between the knots we're going to make on the top, too. All right, here's the basic routine. Uh, you put your sizing card on top of the top string, and then put your attachment string on top of that. I like to pull it over so the knot is a little bit on top of the card here. 
and then you go through the next open cell here across the loop that's formed behind it and then up and over to the left now you want to check frequently to see if you're at the width of your sizing card and that one was really a bit beyond so I'm going to try to urge it more to the left it's about right I'll do another one here a little on the card through the next cell behind that loop and up and over like that I'm purposefully leaving these knots rather loose the reason being that if I come up short I'll have some reserve uh, length for the attachment string sort of uh, hidden inside the knots and I can stretch things out that way okay we're at the last stitch now but before connecting this corner loop we need to deal with uh, the fact that we're pretty far short of our mark but that's sort of as as I'd hoped and after, after now after this the process is to go and tie these knots tighter and reclaim all the material that's in them and then we can slide them these knots over to the right and make up for the distance that we came up short like so we'll see how that goes okay uh, after fussing with these knots a bit and tightening them down so not all the way but most of the way I managed to claim enough uh, of the attachment string to get pretty close to the end uh, and now I'm just going to uh, take the top string make a simple overhand knot in it at the corner of that loop and make the final stitch okay here I'll make that knot around that last loop near the tip like that like so and next I want to do that last stitch don't really need the sizing card for that last stitch I'm just going to kind of pretend ones here and make it just beyond that uh, anchor knot in the corner behind up and pull it over like so that's about right and there we are I like to put leaders on all of my cords and bubbling nets are no exception the simplest thing to do is just leave yourself some extra top string beyond the corners and make a leader out of that just to attach a ring with whatever seems seems right uh, this, these are simple square knots over here and these are West Country whippings I suppose just a, a simple knot and uh, some drops of crazy glue would do fine too uh, or you can use a non-absorbent material like this uh, polyester mason line here and uh, the nice thing about that is you can make a very secure knot by leaving uh, some tail on it and then melting that in a flame and sticking it against the, the cord there to pin it down um, what you see here is uh, 
linerless rubber electrical tape that I use sometimes to smooth out the knots and avoid snags during deployment. I'll probably put some on these as well. But having uh, built your leaders, you're, you're done. Your net is ready to fly.